Talking into a microphone is hard, even for the most experienced broadcasters. How can I sound more natural? How can I take better care of my voice? How can I sound more like myself? We've got solutions. Meet Jessica Hansen. You hear her all the time on NPR. Support for NPR comes from NPR. Offering hoodie footy PJs. And from the listeners who support this NPR station. Jessica is also an actress and director, a voiceover artist, and a vocal coach. With help from some friends here at NPR, Jessica is going to explain three common problems with vocal delivery and teach us some helpful exercises. Low vocal energy. Do you know what low vocal energy is? I guess it's when you just talk in a straight line all the time yeah. and sound like you need a nap. Yeah, and a lot of that comes from poor breath support. So today we're gonna to do a couple exercises that build up stronger breath support and breath control. Okay, let's okay. do it, I'll do my best. Okay, so the first exercise just opens up the rib cage and gets the breath flowing freely in the body. It involves pretending you're different kinds of dogs. Excellent. Do you like dogs? I do, Good. yes. So the first one we're gonna to pretend to be is a chihuahua, and we're gonna just focus all the breath at the very top of your rib cage and do just short, shallow little breaths. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and I have to do this with my hands. Well, you know, it oh, makes sure. it more fun for me. It's cute, but I would have gotten it. a manicure. If I, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's great. Fun, actually. Those are good little little breaths up here. The next dog is a Labrador, and we're focusing on the ribs that are right under your armpits here. Okay. And you should feel those swinging open and closed with this Labrador pant. <laughs> So it's deeper. Mm -hmm. So Good. that rib movement is great because that helps us, um, it helps the breath move more freely once mm -hmm. the ribs are sort of open and swinging happily. And the last dog, you might want to stand up for this dog. The last dog is a great big St. Bernard. You're going to use all of your, all of your big belly and your ribs down here. <sighs> That's yes, a I feel good St. Bernard, here. yeah. Yeah, this yeah. This is fun, but I may faint. Don't do that. Don't do that. Sit down before you faint. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good tip. So that just gets the air moving all the way through your lungs. It gets your body sort of open and loose and ready to take deeper, more intentional breaths. So when you're reading your copy, you can fill up with air better before you start a sentence so you don't start sort of at half tank. So the second exercise is very simple. You're gonna hold out your finger and pretend it's a birthday candle. And you're just gonna to try to blow that flame out on the tip of your finger five times. And you want each breath to be equal in length and mm. power. So it's, it goes like this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? What's important to remember with this one is that you take a Good, deep, solid breath, and then you're blowing that breath out in five equal pieces. Okay, let me try it again. Sure. Yeah. It's harder, but it I see hard. the point. Yeah, so, so once we you know, practice this every day, the body learns how to keep those breaths equal and equally supported, and they've got equal power and oomph in them. Mm -hmm. And that helps to sustain the, the breath energy through a sentence. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard you on the radio. <laughs> Probably. I think I've heard you on the radio. <laughs> do you know what vocal fry is? Oh, yeah, I do. You know what? I'm very good at vocal fry. You are. Fry. I could keep going. That's perfect. It's like popcorn <laughs> popping. Right? Thank you. <laughs> From a vocal technique standpoint, it's not a really healthy way to make sound. The little vocal folds are banging up against each other in a way that they're not designed to do. It can hurt your voice, it can hurt your vocal folds by eventually creating calluses called nodes and then leading to surgery. Nobody wants surgery in your throat, they're not good. So in order to keep your voice out of the vocal fry, 
we work really hard to keep it forward. So it's in the front of the mouth using your lips and your teeth and all those frontal resonators. Yeah. And to do that, there are several exercises, but I'll teach you one of them. Let's do it. So this is called a lip trill. Um, and some people can't do it, so let's see if you can. Basically, you just take a deep supportive breath mm -hmm. and then <laughs> trill your lips. <laughs> Can you do it? I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> you were very good at it. Uh, okay, let me try. <sighs> no? Focus. There it is. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. So you just go up and down in your range yeah. and just explore all the notes that you have. <laughs> and then the next time you speak, you'll just find that your voice is naturally placed forward. All right. So you're giving me total permission now to do this at my desk all day. Oh, I wouldn't do that to your colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about how sometimes people can occasionally sound like they're reading right off the script. We're calling it scripted voice. Sometimes maybe not sounding like they're talking to a person. Has this ever happened to you? I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, I think one of, the, one of the best ways that we can approach this sort of sounding like you're reading words off a page is to choose somebody that you would be talking to, that you would tell the story to. Uh, do you have somebody that you think of when you're reading, when you're tracking? I do, yeah, it depends on the story. Sometimes I imagine my wife sitting across from me or depending on the story, it, maybe my eight-year-old son. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> in addition to having sort of one person in mind that's your imaginary audience, we can also do something with the voice to help limber it up and see if that helps your voice to just open up and find new places that it can go that maybe uh, will help you with that sort of warm and engaging sound that we're going for. That sounds great. My voice is excited to open. So you brought some copy with you today, right? You have a story. I have Excellent. a story. So I'm just going to ask you to read it a couple different ways, okay. um, as playfully as you can. And the first way we'd like you to read it today is uh, like a cowboy. So get in your best cowboy stance and get your cowboy 10-gallon hat on <clears throat> and read it like a cowboy. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to further complicate uh, things, I brought one of the nerdiest, most complicated stories I've had to report in the last year. Excellent. Um, on an IRS data retrieval tool. So this, <laughs> this should be a serious jam. Okay. <clears throat> Warning! The IRS data retrieval tool is down. If those words didn't plunge you into a cold sweat, then you're not a high school senior or college student racing to apply for financial aid. That was great. The next one that we'd like to do, like a toddler mid-temper tantrum. Okay. <clears throat> Warning! The IRS data retrieval tool is down! If those were then plunge you into a cold sweat, I and mean, you're not a high school senior or college student raising to apply for financial aid. Good. So the last one, you've been very bold and brave. Uh, the last one requires all the courage you can muster. Okay. Go ahead and read those sentences again like the greatest opera singer in the world. Okay. Well. Warning! The IRS data retrieval tool is down. If those words didn't plunge you into a cold sweat, then you're not a high school senior or college student racing to apply for financial aid. Mm. Good. How's that? Embarrassing. But your voice moved in all these wonderful places. It moved up and down, and it was big and full. And you lifted your soft palate, and it made all this extra space in your head for resonance. That was great. You make it sound so fancy. It was. It was. It was very fancy what you just did. 